Right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Golfer's Guide. I'm your host, Matt Fryer, and today, in this episode, we're talking about irons. So let's get stuck into The Golfer's Guide right now. Okay, so earlier on in the week, I posted this photo here to my Instagram and my Facebook. If you're not already, guys, do make sure you are following me on the other social media platforms because that's where I'll put the posts for the questions for The Golfer's Guide. So obviously, moving forwards with the show growing and growing, you need to be commenting on these posts so that you're getting your questions answered. So make sure you're following the handles that you'll see popping up there. Remember as well, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you get all your golfing needs covered and get all your answers to your questions. So let's jump into the first question. Um, a lot of them this week were based on, you know, fitting, um, models of clubs as well, what's going to help um, certain categories of players and then some technique ones as well. So some really good questions that have come this week. And um, first one, an optimistic outlook has asked, how hard should I try and hit irons? Am I going for a full swing or is it more of a controlled swing? So when we're playing irons, obviously, Ideally, they'd be our second shot into the green or we're playing them to the green, to the flag. Now, depending on your skill level, depends on how close you're gonna be controlling that ball to said flag. Um, if we are you know, very, very skilled, i.e. a tour player, we'll have our distances dialed in, we'll have the shape dialed in. So the emphasis really isn't on trying to create maximum power as opposed to when we're stood on the tee and we're almost swinging. You know, I wouldn't ever advise everyone to swing 100% on every single shot. You know, keep it balanced, keep it in rhythm, keep that strike's gonna be the number one factor. If we're getting a good strike, we're gonna gain more control anyway. If there's a point where we need to, you know, get an extra few yards out of it, yes, go up to 100%, but when it comes to irons, what you would notice a lot of um, the tour players doing now is they don't swing full out and you would notice generally that everyone doesn't swing almost to a full, what we call parallel swing um, at the top of the backswing. Everyone's just a little bit more cut off and you see a lot of the, the cut off finishes as well now because again, the the emphasis is more on control, on actually shape, direction, not just full out distance. So. I would say, um, you know, work on more the control element more than trying to hit everything full out. Maybe swing your irons at 85% if your flag's at 145 and you hit it 150 with a certain club. Go with that 150 club and, we'll just, you know, just take a tiny bit off of it and let that control element be the main focus. Tiger Cato asks, if my swing is impeded by a tree, it's where I will be standing. Do I take a penalty drop, turn the club over and try and hit it left-handed or put a left-handed seven iron in my bag and take a wedge out? Um, hopefully that situation wouldn't happen that much so I wouldn't see the the um, the value of putting in a, a left-handed club versus you know an extra wedge or you know a hybrid or an extra club you know that it would be in your your dexterity I wouldn't see the trade-off being worth it um, if it's easy to just chip it out backwards do that or play sidewards and um, turning the club over if you've done it before in practice and you're only trying to hit it a short distance and you're not going to air shot it or anything like that i think it just comes down to what's you know what you're capable of really and what's the 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 way to get out of the trouble and back into play as easy as possible okay so we've had quite a few questions on fittings um Trainer Mark asked how much um, of a difference does a good fitting make? Um, generally buy off the shelf, standard length, regular shafts. How do you know what's best for you? Um, then we've got Kevin Westway asking, um, buying his first clubs, um, looking at the Wilson DA7s, six foot two, wondering if standard length would fit him. So looking at fittings, yes, fitting makes a difference. And I've got some videos um, that I'll be producing post lockdown that will be covering these topics. And I think the big thing is fitting is not just getting, whether you're gonna be regular or stiff or you know extra stiff, or are you gonna need it one degree upright or two degree upright and, and your length. When, when I speak to a lot of, you know, especially higher handicappers and beginners who come for lessons, the perception is that that, that is a fitting. That is the only thing that a fitting co um, would cover. But the actual fitting process is a lot more, you know, broad than that. 
You can look at, you know, yes, length is a big one because it's going to affect your strike. So for um, Kev there who said, is, you know, six foot two, a regular is going to, uh, regular length shaft's going to be okay for me. It depends on your arm length. So what your wrist to floor measurement is, um, covering, you know, your set makeup's a huge one. You know, do would you be someone who benefits from having more hybrids in the bag as opposed to irons? You really hate irons. You start at your seven iron and get some hybrids in there. Um, you know, head shape, what type of head shape would you need if there was something where you launch the ball really low, you struggle to get any height on it? Would a head with, you know, a wider sole with more weight down at the bottom of the golf club, would that help you? Would a shaft with a different kick point, a different weight in there change your launch, change your spin? So even if, you know, you're a beginner just starting out there's there's lots of elements that fittings are great for even you know some of my some of my lessons i'll take them even if they're considering a package set you know depending on what your budget is and what you want to spend you could end up getting just a set of irons and a second hand set and you know you could where, where I work at the um, at the range, we've got an American golf on site and they've got, you know, 50 sets of second hands in there at any given time. So there might be something in there that, you know, could take your fancy and could really suit your game. It's a, it's a trial and error process and you've got to go through the fitting process. If you've got a good fitter, which is the, um, the key, you know, someone generally who isn't driven by sales, someone who is an independent fitter is just there, if, you know, and I would advise generally paying for your fitting because they're not then motivated to sell you anything if they're just there to get you the best equipment that suits your golf swing and your game then you're going to come out of it so yes a fitting is important regardless of what level of golfer you're at and i think now is probably more prevalent as well one of the questions that we'll come on to in a moment the way that sets are built you know back when i started golf you got three iron to sandwich and the three iron was 21 degrees in loft and your sandwich was 56 degrees in loft and you didn't see much variance. Everything was three degrees, three to four degrees generally in gaps as the, um, the increments went down the set as well. Now, my four iron, I think is 19 degrees. My pitching wedge is 45 or 44. That used to be my nine iron. So when you're looking at then gapping your wedges, you know, something that, I'm, again, another video I'm going to, do when we come out I think my gaps are totally wrong in my set and um, I'm going for a custom fit when I do when we get out of lockdown and I will well I won't be surprised now because it's something I've been thinking about recently doing more of the tech sort of stuff I've, I'm convinced I've got the setup of my bag totally wrong for me but going through it with a fitter even just not looking at shaft flex and stuff like that actually looking at what clubs I need to actually have in place I reckon I could actually save shots already without, you know, with my swing I've got. So fitting, yes, I would, like I say, regardless of handicap, regardless of your skill level, even if you just start in the game, get some advice, get some information and get the right things in place for you to, you know, get the most out of your game moving forwards. Okay, so Hiberto Rendon from Facebook has asked, as a high handicap, I'm looking for a new set of irons and would like to look at forged. Would that really make a difference opposed to some cast irons? Now, if we don't know the difference between forged and cast, forged metal, cast metal, cast metal is just basically a cast. They have, they pour it in, forged, and they knock it out of a piece of steel. Cast is harder than forged. Forged is a lot softer, so a lot of the player's irons, a lot of you know, the quality blades and things like this will be a lot softer. The main difference that you're gonna get is feel, is the big one, so um, depending on what the shafts are like and what the heads are like, you, you'd notice the big feel difference. Um, and then spin. With a softer club, it spins more, so you lose generally a little bit more distance. Cast might go a little bit further. I would say probably as a high handicapper, um, you know, depending on your, your priorities, you know, looks have got to be one. You've got to like the look of it. Feel, yes, but I don't think there'd be too much of a difference where, 
you would notice, you know, if I put you into a blind test and gave you three seven irons that are cast, three seven irons that are forged, that you would go, well, that one's cast, that one's forged, and you get all three correct, you'd probably, you know, get one or two, but it wouldn't be something where you go, bang, yeah, definitely that is 100% cast, or that is 100% forged. So I think the elements of, you know, how the, how the head's built in terms of, um the the waiting around it is going to be more prevalent for a high handicapper you want something that's forgiving and it's going to give you a little bit more leeway for those off-centered strikes you know the reason why a lot of the, the players clubs are forged as well is because generally everyone's finding the mill, middle um more consistently so you get the benefit of the feel aspect there so no, I don't think it would be a, a huge factor or, you know, a make or break um, decision for yourself to go for something that is forged. Gibwire86 asks, is there much forgiveness in stiff shafts? Mm, yeah, there is, dependent on, you know, tolerance of strike and things like that. One of the things um, that you'll notice from a stiff to regular, and again, this is why fittings are important, um, you know, is spin rate, launch rate. So if you're someone who doesn't apply enough force, i.e., you know, your swing speed isn't good enough or your actual force applied to the handle, you're not going to benefit from a stiff because the the way the, the shaft lags behind the head and things like this, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to launch the golf ball, you're not gonna create enough force to actually launch it and get the spin and things like that. Um, you would notice, um, you know, feel differences as well. If you're not quite striking it, it doesn't, it feels a little bit more dead. So you've got to be able to compress it enough to get the actual feeling from that shaft. And again, that's something that fittings cover. You can go, you know, and change the sound of a driver by changing the shaft. You know, if you like something that sounds tinny or sounds a little bit more dead, certain shafts will give you that. And again, the way the shafts feel, you can, you know, if you want something that when you're, when you're loading the shaft up at the top and you can feel it a little bit more loose, a little bit more, you know, stringy as I'd call it, or do you want something that feels like a, you know, a steel rod feels real firm and there's no play in it whatsoever. So, um, the, there is forgiveness, yes, but it's it's more those feel aspects and creating the right speeds to get the benefits from it. I think sometimes people will choose a shaft just because, oh, you know, the, the bravado factor. I, I've got stiff shafts, so I've got an extra stiff when you might actually be better off with a regular because it will give you better characteristics at impact, i.e. those spins and launches and things like that. So, again, it comes down to getting those fittings. So Andy Walsh asks, what do I think of stronger lofted clubs hit the DI7 before lockdown? Uh, it went 180 as opposed to his six iron current one that goes 160. Will it affect the ball flight, landing degree, um, spin, etc. when hitting into a green? Yeah, 100%. Um, nowadays, if you look at, let me just grab one of mine. If you look at things like this, so you've got your P790 here. Um, like I say, this this four iron is 19 degrees. Traditionally, we would have seen that um, a, a three iron was 21. They've got the speed foam injections where it's gone into here. You've got the, the field ports, everything. So what they do with the loft, a lot of the weight's now down at the bottom of the head. Um, giving it that launch aspect. So we're going for high launch, but then there's low spin in a lot of them as well, um, which yes, is gonna affect how how it reacts when you get into hitting into the greens. So um, that is one of the problems. And again, it just falls back into that fitting aspect, finding a head and shaft combo that marry up to give you, you know, feel, the right trajectory, the right distance, the right spin rate, and getting the right things in place is where some of them you could just go and get a, an iron now that is a, a four iron, let's say, but it's just, you know, 18 degrees. Yes, it goes further, but it's going out dead flat with hardly any spin. So when you do hit it into a green, it goes bouncing on through. So, you know, again, like I say, that fitting aspect is huge. It really is because it's just gonna get the right setup for you. I think buying off the rack nowadays, unless you're someone who just plays once every blue moon and it, you know, it'll get you around the golf course. If we are serious about our golf and we're playing regularly, and generally they are free, and like I say, if you could pay for one, you know that you're not being just sort of sold for selling's sake. Um, 
you're you're going to get the right equipment for you and there's no second guessing it then you know that it works you've seen the data then it's just a case of getting your swing in place so two questions here in one um travers 2503 what sort of irons should a mid handicapper avoid and then matthew t714 asks which golf brand slash club from the brand is best for a mid to low handicapper and um, forge cast blade all technology is throwing me off um so mid handicappers what you what you're looking for basically um is something that isn't going to be too forgiving in terms of you don't want something that's really chunky looks a bit clumsy all the weights down at the bottom there's um, a huge amount of offset on it so even with these when we look at the the iron there we've got it face onto the camera you can't see the neck or here where the hosel is protruding loads on some of the uh, the, the real high handicapper irons we'd see that the head is set back quite a bit all in an aid you know with that to square the face up a little bit more and try and get rid of those slices so um you want to you want to try and go for something that hasn't got maximum offset doesn't have you know a massive clumsy head something that is a bit smaller in profile maybe as well the the sole width here as we see um this one here the four you know it's not huge you might get something that is you know twice the size of that or if we you know we went to the blade we might lose another you know half an inch off the sole we might see that the leading edge of the club as well is very sharp as well with these just slightly more rounded going to allow for you know if we're not quite compressing it we can still get the ball off the turf um if where if it was a big you know dumpy sole with the loads of bounce on it we probably wouldn't benefit from that too much so something that's not really offset and not a big clumsy head um cast or forged again totally your choice um whether whether you can tell the difference again chef feels a, a, a big part of that nowadays we can get things that you almost make it feel that it is a forged iron you look at a lot of the ping stuff feels as soft as any forge club that i've hit when they've have been cast so like i say any any of those things there okay so final question comes from underscore dt58 should i change technique when hitting the ball from below or above my feet with the irons never found a clear concise video on it um, i have got that on the list to actually do when we do get out to play again just giving some tips what we've got to understand is that when the ball is above or below our feet so we've got when it would be below our feet the shaft would go up a little bit more vertical when it is below above our feet sorry we're going to see that the shaft starts to flat out we might also see that the ball might be in front of us closer more up front so we're hitting uphill we might see that we're hitting downhill so we've got something where when it's above our feet we're going to see shaft flatter when it's below our feet we see we see the shaft more vertical and when we're hitting uphill we'd see the loft increase when we're hitting downhill we're going to see the loft decrease so it's going to change the flight basically of everything and um, if the ball's below your feet you're going to see that the ball would tend to move from left to right with a lower flight if it's uh, moving ball above the feet we're going to see that it would move right to left this is for the right-handed golfer if we see that the ball was above if we're hitting uphill we're going to see a higher launch less carry if we're going to see the ball below hitting downhill we're going to see that we'd have a lower launch less carry but more run so would tend to go a little bit further so you've just got to you know change your, your clubbing preferences to that if it's you know the the up and down you're going to start it in a different position you're not going to aim dead at the flag or your target because the ball's most likely going to curve because of the way that the plane is now um, and then dependent on whether you're hitting uphill or downhill it's going to go further or shorter so then you'd have to pick more or less club um, to do that and then also obviously what's what's in front of you if you're trying to hit a, an iron that would go flatter over a water hazard you normally carry it 170 it's only going to carry 160 now leaves you in the pond you have to take all these things into consideration so i will get some videos done on that um, when we get back out from lockdown so make sure you stay tuned for those so guys a couple of takeaway points from the video today i think custom fitting is very important dependent on you know whether you are a low or a high handicap or a beginner we can all benefit from it steel graphite shafts you know are all going to come into that the you know 
the, the fitter will give you information on those things and um, you know head selection i think the the big the big thing is that we we can all benefit from custom fitting as we uh as we do get our new clubs or look to buy clubs or even buying our first sets so i hope you've enjoyed that episode there guys if you don't already do remember to follow the social media handles you'll see them coming up here when the question or the post is post do put your comments in the question box there's no stupid questions i'll answer them if i don't answer them on here there will be an answer coming back to you like i say it's just a way for us to get some more information and more knowledge on the game stay tuned stay subscribed hit the bell down below thanks for watching and i'll see you in another episode of the golfer's guide